Incredible. This man's dog just died, but he's not close enough with his co-workers to tell them. O okay. Horse or hoof? This is click. <laughs> this is click hole. Incredible. This very crafty man turned his television into a fish tank. But that was the last we heard from him. Hope he's okay. Attention do-it-yourself crafters. The bar has officially been raised. When technology gets obsolete, most people just throw it away. But Mark Dobson had a better idea for his old analog television. Rather than discarding it to rot in a dump, Mark embarked on a brilliant do-it-yourself project and transformed the TV into a fish tank. But troublingly, that was the last we heard from him. He isn't answering his phone, and we've started to get worried. Dobson po posted a photo gallery on Imgur showing the clever step-by-step -step process to hollow out the TV's plastic shell and install waterproof tank inside. But he hasn't answered any of his questions in the comments or given a like to anyone complimenting his totally cool work that's functional and sus sustainable. Facebook says that he's online, but he doesn't respond if you send him a message which suggests that the internet con connectivity problem at his apartment. But even then, you would think Mark would just hop on a 4G on the <laughs> to interact with fans of his work. The photo gallery also includes a full list of building instructions if you want to make a TV fish tank for your own home, which really speaks to how great and thoughtful a person Mark is. God, we hope he's all right. In a creative twist, the television knobs have been repurposed to change the color of the fish tank lights. And maybe he just went on vacation without telling anyone? But the tank's the coolest feature of all is the illuminated photograph in the back showing a set from Seinfeld, so it looks like the fish are hanging out with Jer in Jerry's apartment. Mark suggests dropping in a set from your favorite TV show into your own do-it-yourself fish tank TV in what hopefully aren't his last words. None of the local hospitals have Mark Dobson admitted, and it's hard to tell that if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Mark, if you're reading this, we're scared and we love you. And we love your badass TV fish tank. It's an incredibly cool way to recycle what would have otherwise been a piece of junk. Please let us know that you're okay. All right, I'm back. Yay! Sorry about that. No um, problem. We've learned how to turn a t an old analog TV set into a uh, into a fish tank. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. I believe you're the next one up. Okay. A horse with a giant tumor dangling out of its rectum uses its two front legs to drag itself, and the tumor in front of you. What did I just read? <laughs> I'm not sure I want to know. The herd seems to want nothing to do with this thing, which is made evident by the fact that they all keep kicking dirt on it. It desperately tries to offer you its fur to make pants out of by drawing a pair of shorts in the soil with its hoof and then pointing back at itself. You think this may be the horse you're stuck with until 20 seconds later when the horse's tumor pops like a balloon and the whole <laughs> animal deflates into a puddle of former horse. So, still no takers. Good God. Continue waiting for a horse to be interested in you. <laughs> Ooh, this looks like a promising start. After several hours of waiting, this miniature horse is the only one that approaches you. It tries wiggling your legs so that you can sit on its back. Oh, it tries wiggling between your legs so it can, you can, can sit on its back. Ew, no, what the fuck is this? Uh, no, I'm not going to pick the... I'm not going to pick a horse. Oh, I'm going to pick a horse. Apparently, apparently this horse isn't good enough for you. <laughs> okay, which horse do you want to try and ride? We've got several choices. Yeah, we uh, got the brown one in the middle of the other brown ones. We've got the brown one behind the brown one. That's the one the that's screaming one no smile. in a human voice. <laughs> We've got the brown one with the smile that's nice and wide. Uh, the brown one with one good hoof. And uh, two bad ones and one hoof. That's actually a uh, a bird with a horse hoof for a beak. And the brown one that is very still and maybe feeling sick and also blind and laughing. Noted. Uh, 
I'm gonna go for the horse that's screaming no in a human voice. You got it. Oh my god, what am I looking at? You picked a riding horse corpse. You know this horse has to be alive to ride it, right? Pick again. Wow. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> but it was screaming. <laughs> okay. G -g 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 um, ghost horse. I'll uh I'll go with the brown one with the smile that's nice and wide. That's pretty pretty cool. That's that's a nice looking horse. You've picked a nice smiling horse. With your new knowledge of riding, what are you going to do to break the horse's spirit with guilt and shame? <laughs> Get it to <laughs> accidentally kill someone it loves. Form a deep bond with the horse instead. Becoming the first human to ride a horse is not worth it if it must be done through wanton cruelty. Giving Given that I am quite the sadist, I'm cool with choice number one. But, uh, you know, what would be the polite thing to do? Uh, man. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go for, uh, deep bond with horse. Okay. Once again, another horseshoe, but whatever. Given the turbulent relationship 3500 BC humans have with horses, this won't be easy. Staring deep into the horse's eyes, you take its hoof into your hand. Okay, you can kiss the hoof, lay a wreath of flowers around the horse's neck, and blush. Or you can give the hoof a handshake like business professionals would, lay a wreath of flowers around the horse's neck, and blush. <laughs> um, I will kiss the hoof. Aww. I hear wedding bells. The horse seems <laughs> to respond well. Build on this great first step by complimenting the horse. <laughs> Your eyes are pitch black and forever. Is that the you one you're choosing? You are a horse in every way that I care about. <laughs> I'd be honored, not offended, if your horse teeth slowly sank into my skin. <laughs> I respect you more than dogs, and only slightly less than my fellow man. <laughs> I have made it to this junction. You are a horse in every way that I care about. <laughs> As you contend to the building trust with the horse, it shimmies and lies on its back in a vulnerable position to demonstrate how much it it trusts you. <laughs> Blow a raspberry on the horse, or give the horse a hickey on its neck. Oh, good God. <laughs> um... Ew. This is getting weird. Uh, blow a raspberry on the horse. Why not? <laughs> While you're building this deep connection with the horse, the rest of the herd suddenly storm onto the scene and surround you. <laughs> Quickly switch between blowing raspberries on the horse and sucking on its skin to give a hickey to make the internal bond between you grow faster. <laughs> so you can ride... <laughs> You're gonna have to take the next one, man. <laughs> it's my turn, so. All right, not fast enough. The herd pushes your horse out of the way and organizes into a single file line. Looks like this horse wants you to blow a raspberry on it, too. Oblige. And this one. Oblige this horse with raspberries as well. Suddenly, Richard Wheel walks by as he's on his way to retrieve his wheel after crushing a possum to make a brassiere out of it and sees you. Wow, not cool. I am telling everyone in 3500 BC, it's to horseless, it's to horseless hole with you, buddy. Richard Wheel, I swear to you that this is not what it looks like. <laughs> Are those two cats? Well, thanks to Richard Wheel, everybody in 3500 BC thinks you interact with horses inappropriately. Sure, society wasn't as put together as it is today in, <clears throat> as it is today in 3500 BC, but apparently putting your mouth on a horse was too taboo, even for then. 3500 BC society then excommunicates you into the horseless hole where there are no horses, but two bobcats without <laughs> legs. <laughs> Sadly, there's zero chance of you riding those. You failed to become the first person to ride a horse. Try again. Oh, this is the checkpoint, huh? 
you've picked a nice smiling horse. With your new knowledge of riding, what are you going to do to break the horse's spirit with guilt and shame? Man, I say we do things my way. All right. All right. Get it to accidentally kill someone it loves. Just as you're about to go... Oh, sorry. Sorry. You're bad. My bad. (laughs) Our bad. Just as you're about to go find someone that means a lot to the horse, so it'll feel awful when you get to kill them by accident, it turns and whinnies excitedly. Turn two. It's a man holding flowers. The horse approaches him and eats a few of the flowers, then affectionately rubs its neck against him. Hi, I'm Otzi. I see you might be about to try riding this horse. Cool. Before we discuss anything further, there are two things you should know about me. One, this horse and I harbor a deep connection. As deep a connection as a human and horse could have, I would say. It is a relationship forbidden by the herd and mankind, which only makes us bond stronger knowing that the whole world is against it. It's not sexual in any way, but it is far more repulsive. Two. I am absolutely terrified that after I die, someone's going to find my dead body thousands of years from now and make a big deal out of it. Oh boy, that would just be about the worst. Allow me to elaborate. Bingo, this guy will do. Nod your head and begin scheming in your head. The horse is turned around to graze while Utsi blabs about being mortified of people in the future making a big deal out of his dead body. You have an idea. Casually ask Utsi to back up a little bit. Back up? Sounds good. Not a problem. Okay, just to reiterate, if people in the future find my body one day, I hope they just cover it with dirt again and forget about it. Having people you don't know pour over your dead body would be horrible. Do you agree? Keep nodding and ask Otsi to back up a little more. Otsi backs up even closer to the horse. Almost there. Keep nudging Utsi and prepare to slap the horse extremely hard so it kicks the guy in the back of the skull and kills him. (laughs) Back up more? Sure, that's fine. So as I was saying, when I go, I want to be gone. Not one bit of me preserved. Bones and everything. Slap the horse. The horse kicks Utsi in the skull so hard that the poor guy's eyes launch out of his head and rocket over 30 feet in front of him. (laughs) Horrifically, the horse is driven so deep into the back of the guy's head that it gets stuck there and doesn't come out of it until the horse uses its hoof as leverage to yank it free, like how people do when when struggling to take off ski boots. (laughs) It is a gruesome sight, to say the least. Become the first human to do jazz hands behind your back to celebrate. (laughs) The horse looks down to investigate what just happened. As soon as it realizes, it audibly gasps. (laughs) Then begins shaking and vomiting. (laughs) As you watch the horse rub its nose on Otzi's flowers and whimper, you can tell it truly felt something for this person. Jackpot. (laughs) It throws its head in the air and lets out a neigh of anguish. Click your heels, because this horse looks like it's about to be broken. (laughs) The horse lays down and silently stares at the body, privately reckoning with what it has done to Otsi, the human who fed it flowers, the human it trusted even more than it did any horse. You did it! You broke the horse's spirit. Now it is ready to ride. Place your crotch on its back. You've placed your crotch on its back. Uh, now what? Hmm. Trace the word go into its fur. Feebly gyrate your hips while snapping your fingers near its ears. Kick its sides. Pull its tail like how to lawn, like how a lawnmower is started. Because so we had lawnmowers in 3500 BC. What would Charles Human um, Rider do? Wait. He told us to kick its sides. Wait. So that's what we're going to do. All right. No thinking. Kick sides. Whoa, you're going. You're on the horse and it's going. The wind is blowing through your unwashed 3500 BC hair. And the scenery is passing by in a blur. Wee! Woo! Curse, curse, <laughs> curse, 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 curse. Yes. <laughs> We're gonna go with woo. Woo! Oh no, look out. The first ever human dog pile is happening right on the horse's path. Hopefully you remember how to control this thing. 
Make the horse jump over them. Uh, we're going to pull its ears. There we go. Your, Your horse, horse jumps. jumps. You, you land, land safe, safe and, and sound. sound. <clears throat> uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you land safe and sound and keep on riding and riding all the way to 3500 BC Beach. Wow, 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 wow. And that's for me again. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. We're, we're right at the end. All right, what else has happened? Greta Gerwich says, As I see it now, there simply aren't enough catfish, trout, or red snappers in the world to pay off the debt that I have racked up with my local fishmonger. If anyone could spare me some chum in the time of need, that would be greatly appreciated. Greta Gerwich. Hey, Big Red. The thing that keeps me from celebrating too long after winning my first Oscar was knowing that I still needed 15 more to even make a chess set. <laughs> In the break breathtaking transformation, Christian Bale dropped an estimated 900 pounds to get a scrawny body ready for the machinist just months after starring in the Academy Award winning The 1,013 Pound Man. Hello. Hello. What did I just walk in on? Oh, uh, I was just reading stuff while waiting for you. No big deal. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think it's your go. Charles People Rider sees you from afar. He is doing it. He is riding a horse. A horse has been ridden for the first time ever. Give your mentor a knowing nod. Nod. He rides, he rides, shouts 3500 BC Baby on the show in a show of support. Blow the baby a kiss in a purely non-sexual way. You ride on with one final objective on your mind. Richard Wheel. You approach Richard Wheel on the horse in full sprint. What? You're actually riding a horse? Big deal. Wheels can't die. But your horse will when I roll my wheel from the top of Horse Fa Family Bath Mountain and make pants out of them all. Trample, Tramp. Richard. <laughs> 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 you, may, you may have this one. Trample Richard Wheel and destroy his wheel. You leave a trampled Richard Wheel and his now destroyed circle in the dust. He experiences such a severe concussion that he forgets his idea for the wheel. So you steal the wheel from him. A 3500 BC paradigm shifting invention twofer. Nice. F you, Richard Nothing. <laughs> you ride and ride, basking in your accomplishment. You get so caught up in the exhilaration of being the first person to ride a horse that you don't even notice that you're about to ride off a qu cliff. Quick, make it stop! Well, we know the answer to this one too, so let's pinch the horse's eyes. You come to a halt at the cliff's edge just in the nick of time. Congratulations! You were victorious in becoming the first human to ever ride a horse. Plus, you also became the inventor of the wheel along the way. Sadly, Jesus is going to come along in 3,500 years and steal all the thunder from your incredible contributions to human advancement by inventing Christmas. Even so, you enjoyed living to the ripe old... Th you enjoyed living to the ripe old 3,500 BC age of 24 years old and taught the world that horses are for riding, not just making pants out of. And that's something to be proud of. Incredible. Yay. We Yay! did it. We did it together. <clears throat> Yay. And with five minutes to spare. <laughs> Yay. And of course, as always, thank you for watching and spending a little bit of my your time with me. Say goodbye to yes. YouTubes, Chuck. Goodbye, YouTubes. <laughs>